Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be going over how you can make your BMW E46 windows roll up with one touch feature for the switch. As many of you know who have an E46, that when you try to roll up your back windows via the switch, if you just do the one touch to roll them up, they will not roll up or vent in in the case of the coupe. As you know, when you push the button down, they will automatically roll down. And that's exactly what I'm gonna teach you guys in today's video, how you can do this for free. There's a couple things you're going to need. Well, there's two parts to it. The first part is we're gonna modify the switch to allow it to actually push against the piece of plastic so it can um, vent itself in. And the next step after that, we're gonna have to tell the car that we are now can accept this function and how and to control the switch this way. And we'll do that with NCS Expert. This can also be done with BMW Scanner, but in today's video, I will be showing you with NCS Expert since I think that is uh, the easiest way. So let's get started. All right, the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a screwdriver, just a Phillips head screwdriver, a tiny little screwdriver to pick out the plastic piece. And finally, I'm a lot of people use Dremels. I don't have a Dremel with me, so I am going to use a pair of wire cutters to snip the plastic. I already tested it on my driver's side and it worked, so I'm gonna show you guys on the passenger side exactly what I did. So first thing you're gonna do is just pop this piece off. If you have a um, automatic, it will be the same process. You'll still have a trim piece like this, so just pop it off, just put your fingers in it, and just bend the plastic a little and it will pop off. And just pull it up like that. The next thing, you're going to need to do is remove the two Phillips head screw screws. There's one right here and there's one right here. Just remove them. Now that that's removed, just lift up on your trim and it will pop off. And I'll show you over here. There's one wire connector. Just pull, push in the pins, two pins on each side and it should pop right off. And then the same thing on the other side. The connector does look a little different on the other side, but that's fine. Just do the same exact thing. And now that it's off, just kind of wedge it through like that, and it pops off. So now the next thing we want to do is actually remove the actual switch. And to do that, there's these plastic, two plastic, um, see, can you see that? Right here, there's these two plastic pieces. Just pop them off, so pull down and it pulls out just like that. So here's where the plastic screwdriver comes in place. First thing we wanna do is we wanna pop off these switches. A lot of people say on the forums you don't need to, but I will show you why you need to. When you line it back up, it'll be difficult. So to do that, all you're going to do is just take a little screwdriver, pop it in, side pops off, flip it around. Other side pops off pull it out, put that somewhere safe. Same thing to the back. Pop out that side, flip it around. So next thing you wanna do is get your plastic screwdriver in here, 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 and the same thing on the other side. Here, 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 and this piece will separate. So let me show you. So if you get this screwdriver in right here, pop that out. It does, it is a little difficult and maybe two screwdrivers will help you more than one. So that side's out. You can see there's a little gap, so now I'll flip it around and do the other side. All right, now that you have it out, it is a little difficult. Sometimes one side will flop in, the other side will flop out, but maybe two screwdrivers will help. I was able to do it with one, but now once you're done, you can pull this out. You don't need this piece for now. I would clean it out, mine's pretty dirty. I'm gonna clean that out after. But what you do need is this piece. And as you can see, right in there, let me see if I can get a better shot. So I'm hoping this is a better shot for you can see what actually needs to be broken. You need to break off this little piece right in here it la it's stopping it from hitting if you don't know what you want to do you can actually cut off this whole piece down here down here this whole like triangle 
thing on the sides, you can cut that all the way off. That's what I ended up doing the first time I did this on the other switch because I didn't really know too bad what I was cutting, but now I figured out that it's that little piece, that little vertical plastic line right there it needs to be cut or dremeled depending on um, how you want to do it. So I'll show you guys that now. You can also, if you can't get to it, I guess you could file it down a little because it's just that one vertical line and you, the switch is just hitting up against it. I got pretty good with it right now. Um, I might cut down the middle too, just because I'm not taking as much material off on this one as I did on the other one. And I just want to make sure that the feature actually works. So I just keep going back and trying to grab more material on that vertical line just to make sure nothing could possibly be touching it. So basically that whole triangle line in here I'm taking off and I'll show you guys after what it will look like. All right, so let me show you guys what it looks like. I see that'll focus. All right, so now you can see after that vertical line that was going across that line right in here, right here completely gone I just snipped it off you can use a Dremel or whatever you want I ended up just using wire cutters able to snip it off and made a pretty clean line it could have been a little cleaner I used the Dremel there is still a little nub but on this side you can see where the switch hits on the other side there is a nub there too so I think it should be good let's put it back together and see um, if it works well for you guys it won't actually work because um, you need to code it I had mine pre-coded but I will show you guys how to code that after we get it back together All right, it's time to put it back together. So now what you wanna do is you wanna take this piece back out and put this piece in. Make sure these these little uh, lines, the LEDs that you see, just line up into it because it could slip in potentially the other way. And as you can see, you can see the little red dots in there and just push the back together. And it's all snapped in, as you can see. And now we're just gonna put on the little uh, switch covers. And to do that, literally just push in and you, now you can see the reason why um, we had to do it this way because right in there, there's a little uh, line that will only, go in, will only seat itself in one way. And if you did it the other way, you wouldn't be pushing down the switch when you go like this. This would be doing nothing or only doing one way. So that's why it's very important that we actually take out the switch to make sure it lines back up. And there we go. So both in, they both work. Now we will take the your piece of trim right here and it lines up from the back same way it came out it hinges in hinges in something like this so hook it into the hinge up oh, actually wrong way hook it into the hinge and push down and then I like to keep this thing sideways for it to kind of slide right in like that and then you can spin it back the other way, but before we do that, let's put the connections on. Passenger side, driver side, push that down. Now, before you put it back fully back together, you can um, code it and test it. All right, to code the car, um, set up NCS Expert, open it up. If you have any um, issues with this, if you don't know how, if you don't have NCS Expert installed, I have a video showing how to install it, and I will link that up in the cards and put that in the description. So first thing, forgot. Let's open up Impa. Make sure we have a connection. So we have a connection. Then we want to close Impa. We want to open up NCS Expert. Sorry, it's already open. Let me actually close that out. Open up NCS Expert. We want to go load profile. We want to load Revters NCSX profile. I will put the link to this in the video of how to code if you do not have this one. The coding video is the exact copy. Everything's the same as the one I'm using for today, so you should have no issues. You're going to press OK. Then we're going to click Start. Chassis. E46. OK. OK. It's going to read the VIN. 
found the VIN. Now we're going to click back. We're going to click process CCU. We just want to process the GM5, general module 5. Press OK. We want to then change the job, change job to coded date and lesson, which means read the code. Press OK. Execute job, coding active, coding ended. We can subtract this. We are now going to launch NCS dummy. That will also be in the video of how to use it. We're going to click browse should dump you in this folder. It's NCS expert work. Well, it's C drive NCS expert work. If it doesn't, you just have to navigate to it. And I go over all this in the coding video. So if you need help, go check out that video. We're going to load in the trace file. That was the one that was just edited 352 and it's 353. So we're going to click open. We are working with the general module five. So let's go down and just keep picking them so you don't get an error. I got an error. So it's not that one. It's just the different versions of it is all it is. So, yep, that worked. I got no errors. Now we're going to scroll down. If you see anything else in here that you want to activate while we're working, you can do that. So let's scroll down. We have one touch open driver window. Okay, that's good. We're getting close. Now we want one touch opening on the rear windows, which already is enabled. What we really want to enable is one touch closing rear power windows. Yours is going to say not active or niche active which means not enabled, we want to change that to active enabled. And that is one touch rear closing and they will now close from the modification and the coding. Um, we don't have to worry about that, that's convertible. It looks like that's all we have to code. So now what we're going to do is we're going to click export. And we want to export FSW underscore PSW dot man click export and it exported it now we can close out of this actually don't click cancel we don't want to empty that file yet or just you can leave it open I recommend actually leaving it open we want to go back to NCS expert we then want to click change jobs then we want to do um, SG code Deeren. And then we're going to click execute job. It's going to say coding active, coding ended. I'm not going to do that only because I've already coded it. So now I'm going to go back to the camera and we'll test it out and show you guys that it's working. All right. And now I want to show you guys that this is fully working. So let's open up the window. So push this down. And as you can see, it auto opening up like it normally would. Okay, cool. So it auto opened up. Now let's go back. Let's press this button once. You have to, one con about this I realized, you have to make sure your keys are in your ignition. It won't work after you shut the keys off in the ignition, which is weird. I don't know why your front ones will, but um, if you pull up on it once, auto closing on its own and I'm not doing anything. Awesome. I'm so happy that it now does that. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed. That's it for this video. If you have any sort of questions about this DIY slash mod, anything related to coding or anything like that, please drop them in the comments below. If you liked this quick, easy mod, there's no really videos on YouTube showing you how to do it, so I thought I'd make a video. But if you liked it, hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. I have some really cool, interesting stuff planned. I have a couple more mods that no one actually really talks about or makes video about. It's on the forum. I have some cool things that I will be showing soon. And also, I got a new bumper for um, for the front of the car. It's not the ZHP one that I really wanted. Uh, Keys Motorsports actually hooked it up with an M3 style bumper, so I will be showing that in the near future. I'm not sure what we're doing, if we're going to install it and pull it back off to get it paint. As you guys know, the paint on my car is not that great, and I do have some rust that needs to be taken care of. So uh, also drop your comments about what your opinions are that you think I should do and how I should handle this. Um, that's it for this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.